Welcome, everyone. This is Polly Niels, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at lasers and Lotro and hear Lotro Players. And this week, I am joined by Hello. Cinders. Hello there. And this week, our news is just one little item. We have a release for update 40.0.1, which was released last week on May 22nd. And news and notes worthy for quests, deeds, and adventure areas, voiceover audio for the kindred in the last step of the new quest for the Ketip storyline now plays properly. Good. Right. And the quest objective for the final quest in the Infusion from the North Arc now reads correctly. Oh, yep. it's good. The newly created Craft Guild quests that allow you to acquire the Umbari Craft Guild dailies after dropping the profession are now correctly counting towards the weekly guild That will quests. make a bunch of people happy. Yes, I'm sure of it. Umbar Moch resource node tracking is now behaving correctly uh, with the following additions. Track mines will now display abandoned iridescent ore nodes on the radar map when available. And yes, I did verify that today that that's oh, working cool. properly. I was not using mine. Okay. Track crops will now display mushroom and caps of even gleam on the radar map when okay. available. Track artifacts will now display Umbari candles on the radar map when available. Wood nodes in the Umbar Moh will display as old barrels of abandoned planks rather than branches. Yes, which can be really disconcerting if you do not know that and you go to click on them thinking they go with a quest and then you're told that you don't have the right skill for it. As I discovered today. <laughs> Yes. And for monster, um, Karimal Has Hejai Dil Emirs now has open tapping enabled. The rare spawns in the flooded undercity area of the catacombs were spawning too frequently. They will now respawn correctly. And for second corsairs in Ilmabiri, in the catacombs of Umbar, now count for the Slayer deed for Second Slayer of Ilmarbiri and for Second Slayer Ilmarbiri. We advanced. have also confirmed that those do okay. count for those. <laughs> uh, much to Pineleaf's dismay. And yes, and instances and skirmishes in the depths of Machta Corbo when. Umshura's head rises out of the water and now correctly counts down for a period of time until it becomes furious. And furious countdown timers are now visible effects exposed to players under the vitals of Umshuru and slapping tentacles. And sturdy tentacles morale has been reduced by 20%. And as for miscellaneous updates, instructions to toggle the slash move whimsy and slash milestone whimsy emotes uh, to the default now show are now shown in Both the collection of which panel. Pineapple is verified, correct? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, it's the oh instruction. Well, actually, I didn't actually verify the that the instructions have been updated. I. Because I've just been using oh, okay. the emotes. Which are so delightful. I can't wait. <laughs> there will be a little M in her pink little outfit, skipping merrily through all the dangerous areas of the game. It will be fabulous. <laughs> and the collections panel stable master map now shows the Umbar Bok. Um, Yes, guides. And all decorative floor and wall items introduced in Update 40 are now using the correct textures. There are a few known issues, though. 
First off, due to an issue with the new rare spider spawn, Lightless Matron, she will be deactivated until a future update. Oh, bummer. The barley bread required to advance the quest Infusion from the North, the proper outer layer, is obtained from an apprentice tier's recipe. They're just making sure that you understand that apparently there are two things called barley bread in this game. One is the apprentice, though a you know very, very early thing that you get as a cook, and then as opposed to a Westfold tier ingredient recipe called loaf of barley bread that cannot be used to advance the quest. So you have to use barley bread and not loaf of barley bread. We are clarifying the names for these items in a future that update. That will be helpful. And I think before you never had to worry about it because the only thing that called for one of those was on the same tier. So it was pretty obvious which one they were talking about. But now that's not quite the case. Fair. All right. And that is it for update 40.0.1. Obviously, these re release notes are much shorter than the ones we had last um, week. The Eye of Sauron says that you do need to work on your uh, speech of Mordor before you join us on the dark side. Why do I need to join the dark side and why do I need to improve my Because I'm like 95% sure that the Eye of Sauron might be Krista. Um, and <laughs> uh, and I don't know exactly why, except that perhaps your pronunciation is a little laborious, but I don't know for sure. Well, Either that or the Eye of Sauron is just being a punk. Well, I mean, that's the purpose of the Eye of Sauron is to... <laughs> Be yes. obnoxious, isn't it? I just figured I'd share with you. Very well. How about you sharing with us the store sales? Okay, for this so week? I am super excited actually about the Whimsical cool Patrons coffer sale being extended. Um, it will be available in the Lotro store through June 2nd, which means that it will be past payday. Yay! Um, you can read more about this limited time offer on Lotro.com. But having seen the uh, Move Whimsy and the uh, Milestone Whimsy emotes, I am so excited. Um, you can go there and back again and get 20% off Milestone Skills, Hurry Traveler, and Returning Traveler, Advanced Riding Trades, and Rally Horns through the 30th of May. Um, those, as usual, I will encourage you to get, especially if you have a character that doesn't get ports. Um, so basically anything that's not a warden or a hunter or, I guess, a mariner. Um, Fair the enough. weekly coupon yeah. is free 10% run speed boost times five, uh, with the coupon code HEYDO, H-E-Y-D-O, also through May 30th. Ah, uh, yes. And actually, this week, uh, during Little Redhead's stream, Heart of a Hoppet, when she was going on and playing with the patron's coffer, she has decided that now there is finally a use for a hunter for all those return to skills. You know how you sometimes you go there, you have a warden version of the skill, you have a mariner version of the skill if it's a, if it's at a seaside, and you have a warden version. So you have warden hunter and mariner versions. Plus, you have the return to skill that anyone can get because normally, of course, if you're a warden or a hunter, you don't bother with the return to right. skill because you've got this one that has a much shorter cooldown to it. But when, but of course, she sees the milestone skill that you've got for that, and the emote for the milestone skill is used for the return to skills and for the milestones. But because of the different tech involved with it, it is not used for the class based skills. You know, that you'll still have your emote where you're going around looking for your contact instead. Okay. So because of that, 
if, if you don't care as much about the cooldown or anything like this, then okay, then you may have the return to skill kept around just so that you could have the milestone skill emote instead of the class one. Obviously, if you're a hunter and you need to take other people with you, you're going to still use the guy two skill instead. Hmm, that does make sense. You're right. And I do have a couple of cases where my warden does have both versions of that skill. So, yes, I... So I won't have any trouble switching back and forth between the, depending on what I'm what I need at the moment. Because obviously the cooldowns are a lot faster on the class versions of the skills. Okay. So you remind me that because of course of course if you have five minute cooldowns then it's not that much. No. Faster. But it is fantastic for so people who don't have those skills. Yeah, so yeah, so if you need Oh, yes, these hurry traveler and return travel skills. Yes, they are very, very nice to have around. And so let's then head into our week in gaming. Cinders, what uh, were you up to? Kind of driving you crazy, wasn't I? Um, so today, <laughs> Pineleaf and I went adventuring in the underground portions of Umbar, and um, I proceeded to start poking my hobbit's nose into every nook and cranny, and Pineleaf's going to say, no, don't go that way! Don't go up there! No, don't go there! No, it'll come later. Don't go that way. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I was trying to keep her on task. For what yes, we were doing at and the then time. Uh, we went through the same area like three different times <laughs> with the Forsaken, uh, which is uh, how we know that they do advance the deed because we might have advanced the deed uh, doing that. Um, and then I have not done anything else for the last two weeks because uh, Sans and I got new puppies. And I will add pictures in the show notes um, when it posts on Monday as a puppy tax for you all. Because they are adorable, but they are also menaces. So, um, <laughs> and, uh, Yule and Shadow uh, have joined our family um, unexpectedly. And so thanks to Drac, we actually got uh, the last two weeks of shows up. Um, and, but that is what I've been up to. Finally, what about you? All right, then we will begin with my my warden and my mariner, who both of them got through the new kindred episodic content because this week was the first week in which we had the new continuing story of the kindred of the coin that's going to be going on for the next eight weeks. So I did the first part of that on two characters. And I'm hoping to soon be able to get M, have my have my rookeeper do it with M, but we'll see. So if you can understand yeah. what I'm talking about when I talk about Well, fingers crossed, we'll actually get Krister to do it with us too, since he's going to play a little bit this week with us. I, yes, we, we will have to go and see how well that works also. Uh, they will be able to have some reports on that too. On my lore master, I assaulted uh, the fortress of Dol Guldor. I think I still have to get inside of a tower there, but outside of that, I've done quite an assault on Dol Guldor. And then on Friday Night Fight, we ran six-player skirmishes. We ran Storm of Methadris, Attack at Dawn, Thievery and Mischief, and the Icy Crevasse. And it so happens that just before that, in the field trip, we were also running six. Well, there were the six player versions of skirmishes, but we had only four. We were running through it with four mariners. And with four mariners, you just rip through everything so quickly that. What? Oh. What? Who needs a healer? Because all the enemies are dying too fast. And why learn between these two items in here is that. I'm thinking it must be since 40.1 or something. I don't know what it was, but I'm suddenly seeing that the six-player versions of skirmishes, they will drop the yellow traceries. And I don't recall seeing traceries drop on a regular basis in a skirmish before. 
So either that, I was being very, very luck unlucky, or something that they added probably with update 40 would be my best guess on that matter. Now, of course, my higher level characters, they probably don't need yellow traceries, but the Mariner group I'm in that we're doing on with the field trip, since they're relatively early in their career using legendary items, if a yellow drops, it would actually come in handy if it's one that, you, that we don't currently have equipped. We'll have to see. And that's it on that side. Though, I should note that on the Icy Crevasse, when someone decided to do the Icy Crevasse, I said, okay, what are the odds that we are going to finish this? Because I've had plenty of Icy Crevasse runs that just were impossible. And we did not have a real tank for, for that particular set of runs that we did. And our first time we attempted the boss fight in IC, we did get ripped to pieces. All right, half of us got ripped to pieces on the second time through, but somehow the survivors managed to finish it. So we did manage to finish IC Crevasse on the six player version. And I always find that a very, very tough, tough skirmish to do. In fact, I think that at six, I would give better odds of finishing Dumacaris Galebrin than the Icy Crevasse. Mm -hmm. So, well, at, at lower levels, I would I probably flip uh, flip on the odds on that one. And that is it for my week in Lotro. If you'd like to send us an email, you can send it to podcast at lotroplayers dot com. And on the Players Alliance, we record two shows each week. On Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. time, we record Loach Players News and re-record DDO Players News when Drac is available. You can choose her shows at loachplayers.com slash live. And that's all for tonight, then. This is Pipe Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>